The DASH study, or in full, the study of disease activity and school children's health in Port Elizabeth, South Africa, is a joint research project between the Department of Sport, Exercise and Health at the University of Basel, Switzerland, the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute in Basel, and the Department of Human Movement Science at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University of Port Elizabeth, South Africa. The aim of the project is to assess the burden and distribution of communicable diseases and non-communicable chronic conditions among school-aged children in selected schools near Port Elizabeth, South Africa, and to assess their impact on children's cardiorespiratory, physical fitness, cognitive performance and psychosocial health. The DASH study is funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation and the National Research Foundation of South Africa. This is a three-year study which has been conducted between 2014 and 2016, with the project wrapping up in 2017. Ethical clearances were obtained from the various organizations in South Africa and Switzerland, and permission to do the study was granted by the Eastern Cape Departments of Education and Health. Lifestyle, physical inactivity, for example, and nutritional issues, for example the consumption of high sugar and salt diets, have emerged as new leading risk factors for human health, accounting for 10% of the global burden of disease as expressed in disability-adjusted life years. Studies have revealed that the South African population has shifted towards a disease profile similar to that of Western countries, with increasing numbers of deaths attributed to chronic diseases. Despite this shift, however, infectious diseases that are intimately connected to poor living conditions and poverty continue to occur in marginalized communities and affect school-aged children in poor neighborhoods in South Africa. In-depth studies pertaining to this double burden of disease provide new insights into their impact on children's physical fitness and psychosocial health. Furthermore, the data from such studies are required to tailor setting-specific interventions to improve children's health and well-being. Well there are two phases of the study. The first phase involves a cross-sectional survey and implementation of a cluster-randomized controlled trial, and includes the baseline testing of 1,000 grade 4 school children, aged between 9 and 12 from disadvantaged primary schools in the Port Elizabeth area. A total of 103 quintile 3 primary schools from disadvantaged communities in Port Elizabeth were invited to be considered to participate in the study. The project documents were hand-delivered to each of the 103 schools due to many schools not having working telephones, fax machines or emails. Written responses were received from 25 schools. The study leaders undertook to be inclusive and invited interested principals, grade 4 teachers and school governing bodies to an information meeting in October 2014. Eight schools were finally included, with selection based on grade 4 class sizes and geographical location. Permissions from parents and guardians of approximately 1,200 children from these eight schools was sought. Meetings were held explaining the sensitive nature of the clinical part of the study. The fact that urine, stools and blood were to be collected necessitated that parents had to be well informed to overcome anticipated prejudices or concerns. The baseline testing commenced in February 2015. The study team consisted of postgraduate students from the University of Basel and from the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. They were assisted by biokinetics interns and NMMU students from the departments of Human Movement Science, Psychology and Nursing. The team spent two to three days at each school performing a series of tests. Day one consisted of the clinical examination, which included detailed history taking and physical examinations to assess for presence and complications of infections. For the detection of anemia, the hemoglobin concentration was measured with the HemoQ HB301 system. For the detection of type 2 diabetes, the blood glucose level was measured once using the AccuCheck blood glucose monitoring system. Blood pressure of each child was taken once with the Omron digital blood pressure monitor for the detection of hypertension while the child was seated. The following anthropometric measurements were taken. 
body weight using a digital weighing scale, body height using a stadiometer, skin folds measured at two sites, namely triceps and subscapula. Various standardized questionnaires were used to assess the children's psychosocial health. All children complete a questionnaire that contains aspects of psychosocial health and physical fitness. The questionnaire is filled in in the classrooms and it takes about three hours to complete. Most children struggle to read so they depend on the teacher's auditory instructions or from the instructions of community members that speak their own language. Usually we have three to four helpers or community members that support and encourage the children. The first part of the questionnaire is the D2 test, which is a test of attention and it measures the children's cognitive performance. The second part of the questionnaire gathers information about the socio-economic status as well as hygiene and home life. We were very thankful to have community workers within the classroom who were able to support the kids in answering these questions. The last part covers questions from the HBSC study and provides insight on the physical activity of each child in the last seven days, their leisure time activity and the way to and from school. Every school and class presents new challenges. Um, in some of the classes there are up to 58 children in a class and they have to share benches and discs. Nonetheless, they are eager to come to school and learn every day. Day 2 consisted of physical fitness testing using the Eurofit fitness testing battery. In order to get a comprehensive view of the children's fitness levels, the testing protocol aims to measure cardiorespiratory endurance upper and lower body muscle strength, flexibility, as well as coordination and speed. All tests were explained in the children's home language and were demonstrated prior to the children conducting the tests. The 20 meter shuttle run is a running course that is pre-measured and marked out with various color cones. Starting with a running speed of 8.5 km per hour, the frequency of the pre-recorded sound signal increases gradually such that every minute the pace increases by 0.5 km per hour. Level 5, 4. Level 5, 5. Children ran in groups of 15 to 20, which allowed two shuttle runs per class. The children ran with kids coaches, who set the pace and four children were assigned per kids coach to record the number of laps completed as well as to encourage the children and ensure that they ran correctly. The 20 meter shuttle run is a measure of cardiorespiratory endurance. The children thoroughly enjoyed this test as they were able to cheer their classmates on as they participated in the test. Standing broad jump required that each child stand behind the line and jump as far forward as possible, landing with both feet without falling backwards. The distance of the jump was measured from the starting line to the heel of the, of the most back foot. This standing broad jump test is a measure of lower body strength. The grip strength test required that each child grip the hand dynamometer as hard as possible. Each child was given three trials, beginning with their dominant hand, and a 30 second break was provided between trials. The child was placed in a relaxed seated position, elbow flexed at 90 degrees, and the wrist in a neutral position. And this test was able to measure upper body strength. The sit and reach test measures flexibility of the hamstring muscles and to a minor extent the lower back muscles. 
The children were instructed to take their shoes off and place the soles of their feet against the cylinder reach box. With hands placed over each other, the children were required to reach as far forward as possible in order for a measurement to be taken and recorded. This test measures flexibility. The jump sideways test requires children to jump laterally with both legs as many times as possible within 15 seconds across a wooden bar, which measures coordination and speed of the leg muscles. Urine and stool samples were collected to assess the burden and distribution of communicable diseases. The collection process was explained to children in their home language, which was either English, Afrikaans or Tosa. Each child was given a small plastic container which was clearly labelled with a unique identification number. They were asked to fill up half the container with their own stool at home and to bring it to school for collection the following morning. Urine samples were collected from each child while they were at school. The urine and stool samples were taken to the laboratories of the Department of Medical Laboratory Sciences at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, where they were analysed. Infectious diseases that are closely related to poverty may be found in disadvantaged schools in South Africa. Consequently, these infections may um, uh, have a negative impact on cognitive abilities and therefore may affect the student's school performance. First, a single urine specimen will be collected from each child and analyzed visually for macrohematuria and then tested with reagent strips for the presence of blood in urine as a proxy for schistosoma hematobium. Next, the point of care circulating cathodic antigen test will be used for the detection of schistosoma and Sony infections. Second, a single stool sample will be collected from each child. The stool sample will be visually examined for the presence of tenia species proglottids, as well as signs of blood, mucus and diarrhea. Then duplicate cut or cut stick smears will be prepared from each stool specimen Possible species to be detected under the microscope include the three main species of soil transmitted helminths, Ascaris lumbacoides, hookworm, and Trichurus trichuria. Other species will also be detected, such as Fasciola hepatica and Schistosoma mansoni. For the detection of Cryptosporidium species and Giardia intestinalis, a Cryptogiardia durostrip rapid diagnostic test will be performed on each stool sample. This method is used to detect is also used to detect Helicobacter pylori. These tests are also diluted with a commercialized buffer. Based on the results of the laboratory testing, affected children were treated for soil transmitted helminth infections (STH) based on the World Health Organization's treatment guidelines. When STH is less than 20%, infected individuals were provided treatment on a case-by-case -case basis. When STH infection is equal to or more than 20%, but less than 50%, mass treatment with a single dose of albendazole 400 mg was administered. When STH infection was equal to or more than 50%, mass treatment was done and should be repeated within the same year. The second deworming is being planned for the end of July 2015. A total of 67 school children was referred to the local clinic based on laboratory results or physical examinations performed by the nurses. Predominant reasons were either a cryptosporidium or guardia positive infection in combination with functional signs such as diarrhea, belly ache or blood in the stool, special lung sounds like creeps and wheezing, hypertension, ringworm, and tachycardia. The follow-up on these referred children will be pursued consistently throughout the year. In addition, each school's feeding program was analyzed. A dietitian inspected the food preparation and cooking facilities at schools and gathered information from the meal servers and other personnel responsible for the school feeding program. The products sold by school tuck shops and informal vendors were also noted. 
Recommendations and training will be provided in the next phase of the study in relation to cooking methods, hygiene practices and ways to make food production more efficient. The vendors and tuck shop managers will also be informed about healthier snack choices that can be sold to the children. This concludes the first phase of the DASH project. The second phase, to be reported on later, entails the design and implementation of setting specific interventions and the measurement of the effect of these targeted interventions on the health parameters, physical fitness, cognitive performance and psychosocial health of children involved in the study. Level three, seven. An intervention toolbox is proposed, with the specific combinations of interventions to be guided by the key findings of the baseline testing. The interventions include a physical education and physical fitness program, a health and hygiene education program, a nutrition intervention in addition to a medication and deworming program. The second phase is currently underway and will be reported on at a later stage. The DASH research team would like to acknowledge the Swiss National Science Foundation and the National Research Foundation of South Africa and all other sponsors of the project. Hey, Tom! Tom! Tom!